Hey everybody, it's John DeYoung and today I'm going to do a follow-up to a video I posted a few months ago about a torn bicep tendon. This is the long head proximal tendon, actual photo <laughs> of when I tore the tendon off the bone. I'm getting a lot of questions about strength, about aesthetics. So I think people are asking questions because they're trying to make up their mind if they should have surgery or not. Um, you can live without a long head bicep tendon. So the important thing is to find out what's the role of that tendon. Apparently it has to do with stabilization in the shoulder. Now, as you can see here, the long head tendon passes through the shoulder joint on its way to the top of the glenoid, which is the socket of the shoulder. That's where it inserts into bone. So the good thing is you tore the tendon off the less significant uh, uh, head of the bicep. The short head bicep tendon is a hell of a lot more significant than the, sh than the long head. So that's good for you there. <laughs> and again, there's evidence that shows that the long head tendon doesn't really help with stabilization in the shoulder. So, so if you decide not to have surgery, uh, you should really focus on strengthening the rotator cuff muscles for them, teres minor, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and subscapularis. So even if you do have surgery, those are really important to keep strong because you've had trauma to the shoulder. Moving forward, take care of the rotator cuff muscles. Check them out on YouTube videos. Today we're discussing strength and aesthetics for the long head bicep tendon tear. So let's talk about strength. Great thing is I got 90 to 95% of my strength back. Um, so that's a great thing. And it's going to take some time, six months to a year, depending upon your work ethic, how often you train it, train it smart. Uh, but you'll get the strength back. So we got one more. It really comes down to one thing about this long head bicep tendon tear is aesthetics. You know, you got the Popeye bicep. Everybody talks about that as a bad thing. And I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> but you will have that void, as you can see here and in this picture. Um, so you want to fill in that void. Because, again, if you're wearing a tank top or nothing, you're going you're gonna to see that. So what can you do? The answer is simple. Brachialis. Very popular muscle with bodybuilders because it used to be, in my set, my case, it's actually supposed to be under the long head of the bicep. So it pushes your, pushes your biceps up and fills that void um, or it just makes them look more full. And in my case, it'll help fill the void because um, my long head biceps no longer are there. So it's going to come right underneath of the short head bicep and give that a little more volume. Uh, the brachialis, okay? It's, um, it's great because it actually a response to palms down, inverted bicep curl, palms down or palms in, hammer bicep curls. Okay, so again, palms down or palms in. You could do a single dumbbell, you could do barbell, the easy bar curl. So we're gonna hit the brachialis. So you're gonna work a little more side deltoids. Don't forget your triceps in the back. You wanna fill in the back with the triceps. You've got the short head, you're gonna crush that. And now we're gonna add brachialis to the... The brachialis is made up a lot of fast twitch muscle fibers. So again, you're going to probably err around four to eight reps for hypertrophy failure and really work the eccentric or the way down. It responds well to that. Okay. So brachialis is your answer. Okay. Get those arms big. If you have any more questions, shoot me a comment and uh, best of luck. Let me know how it goes. Okay, guys. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you soon.